Hello, hello, and welcome to Thursday Night Live for Cricket for Australians. I hope you're well. Let me know in the comments what you've been up to today. Uh, today is all about Infusible Ink and also Anzac Day. So again, let me know in the comments what are you making for Anzac Day? What have you made for Infusible Ink? If you've got questions about Infusible Ink, type it in caps in the comments so it'll make it easier for me to find it. You can ask me absolutely anything that you want to. If you don't know who I am, my name is Paul, Scissors Paper Paul on Instagram, Facebook, and on YouTube. I'm here to share my cricket knowledge and expertise with you so that you can master these incredible machines and products and make beautiful things. Also, if you're new to my channel, type new in the comments so I can get to meet you, but also give me a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you to everyone who's already subscribed. You guys are so amazing. I appreciate every single one of you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So let's jump into the comments and have a bit of a look and then we'll get started. So who's here? We've got Sharon, hey Sharon, welcome. Nice to see you here. Linda, Linda's always here. Thank you, Linda, you're amazing. I'm well, I am well, I'm well. It's hot today, I've got my aircon going. Let me know if it's too noisy, I can turn it off. But it's been really hot here today and I think for the remainder of the week in Melbourne, it's gonna be like 16, 13, 14, 16, blah, 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 typical Melbourne weather. Karen's here, good evening to you as well. Lynette's been slaving away at work. No cooking for Anzac Day, um, but I'm a marshal on Anzac Day. Really hoping this year, I, I mean, fingers crossed, everything goes well and we can actually celebrate out in public. Would be awesome. Hey Suzette. Good to see you. Donna's here as well. Tanil, welcome. Tanil's a regular. Chris is here. Yay! Always uh, good uh, to see the regulars here. And Lynette, all the way in Adelaide. Awesome. So good to see you. Yay, Natalie, you've made it to one of my lives. Brilliant. Um, if you don't know, every Thursday night, on behalf of Cricket for Australians, myself or Natalie go live at 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> now the daylight savings over. Um, and we just go through a particular project. Um, you know, we try to kind of, you know, think about what's topical, what you guys are up to. Last week we did a Mother's Day card. If you haven't done a Mother's Day card yet, uh, you're watching the replay, I'll link a, uh, a card up top and uh, check that out. A lot of you did make that card, which I really appreciate it. It's really, really awesome to see your take on that as well. Um, Judy's here from Harvey Bay. Yay, Judy, I think you've been here before. I was saying that I so want to go to Harvey Bay. Cannot wait. Gail's here as well. And Janine, awesome. All the regulars are here. Thank you so much. Again, let me know in the comments. Infuse link questions, comments, what have you made, what do you want to make, uh, let me know. But we'll go through lots of tips and tricks tonight as we go through the process. If you don't know what Infusible Ink is, it is a an incredible Cricut product that, as the name suggests, unlike Iron On or uh, hey, hey, says right, HTV, uh, it literally infuses into the substrate that you're applying it, or to the material that you're applying it to. So, for example, my birthday t-shirt from last year giving away my age but as you can see it's super smooth smooth it's stretchy um, it's you know it's permanent it's not going to fade it's just it's right in there with the fabric uh, equally and hopefully you can see this I'll go really close and block my face um, but coasters beautiful glossy coasters super super gorgeous again I'll link a card to this particular project as well and also you know I'm obsessed, obsessed with coasters, I've got them everywhere, but also pens. So I'll just hold this up, so this is a drawing. This is me, apparently, uh, but my son made this for me, uh, so he freehand drew this and coloured it in with Cricut markers and pens. And again, it's right in there, this has been washed, uh, it's gone through the washing machine and still looking really beautiful and really vibrant. I don't know why I've got two arms, four legs and a tail, um, but there you go, that is me. Thank you very much. But again, you know, these are things you can't buy in a shop, right? Which is so great about what we do when we're crafting and making. So I'll pop that down there. Uh, Janine's loving the bag. Thank you. It's one of my favorites. I take it out to the shops all the time. Uh, let's go to the overhead as well. And we'll just look at some of the products that we're going to be using tonight. I might just move my, key, um, my uh, keyboard out of the way. 
so infusible ink first and foremost that's what we're going to be using now today I have uh, I've got the one of the two packs um, so these do come in singles doubles and I think there are four packs as well with the doubles and uh, the four packs typically they are coordinated sometimes I think with black you get two sheets of black um, but this one is called cosmic it's one of the patterns hopefully you can see that and it's kind of like a gray and black uh, well it's gray with a black polka dot and then it comes with like a navy blue to accompany it as well uh, what's important to note with this one, which I didn't realize until I was actually starting to do some of the cutting, but this does actually have a gradient on it as well. So I think the black dots, the polka dots, actually start to fade as you go down the sheet, and we'll discover that together tonight. The other thing that I should mention, I have done some of the cutting, but I just wanted to highlight, you can see how this is brown, okay? And this is obviously gray and black, but that is what it looks like. Don't worry, when you open your package, and it looks a weird color, that's totally normal. Once we apply the heat, it's gonna completely transform uh, when it applies to the substrate. So we've got some of this gray and polka dot that we're using. And I'm just gonna move all of this out as well. And I've got some of the Joy um, infusible links here, which were perfect because part of the design was a little bit smaller and I've already cut out the main design. And then I've also cut out um, some of the red Again, it looks really different until it's applied. Um, and what we are going to do tonight, because I want to, you to see some of the cutting and see some of the tips and the weeding process and things like that, we also have some of the green. So these are really, really good. If you Even if you don't have a Cricut Joy and you just want small uh, colors and small, um, just little bits of color rather than 12 by 12 sheets, these are really, really handy to have in your craft room. So we'll be cutting with the green and we'll talk about what's inside the box as well. Um, I should mention, because I will forget and I always forget, this is what I would call my lint-free cloth. Now, <laughs> I thought it was like to clean your coasters, to clean your <laughs> substrate, which is actually what I use it for, clean your surface. Um, but actually it's a test sheet. So if you want to test the infusible ink to make sure you know exactly what's going to happen when it's applied, that's what this little piece of uh, polyester fabric is actually for. So I'm always saying the wrong thing. That's the truth. <laughs> you heard it here first. The other thing is as well, with Infusible Ink, I cannot recommend enough um, the need to do a test cut. And what I do is I keep little scraps, little cutoffs, little leftover bits. I mean, this is a really lovely square piece. Um, they're not always so pretty, but always do a test cut first just to make sure the machine is cutting correctly. And also, particularly if it's a new blade, just make sure that um, you just want to make sure that you're getting a really, really good cut. You can hear my easy press as well, which is off camera. That is also uh, heating up and we'll talk about that when we come to do uh, application. But yes, keep your little off cuts. And here are our infusible, uh, not infusible, here are our Cricut aluminium sheets. Not readily available in Australia, however, Craft Online do have them, and I have included a link. These ones are 8 by 8 inches, or is it 20, basically 20 by 20 centimeters. You get two in a pack, um, and that's what we're going to be working with tonight. Now, I have never, I'm just going to go to the split camera, I have never used infusible ink on aluminium. So the end result, it's, it's a bit of guesswork. I'm hoping it's going to work out. Um, if it doesn't, we're going to learn together some, some, some tips and tricks along the way. But that's what we're going to be using today, which is really, really cool. Um, of course, we've got our mat. We've got some other things as well, which we'll talk about as we get to use them. Um, but yeah, again, let me know in the comments if you've got any questions, anything that you want to mention. I might get out my aluminium sheet now. So that's something I don't have to worry about. They are stuck on here by the look, so I'm opening this package for the first time. Just going to use my true control knife to help me get that out. Make sure I take off. Okay, there is also a protective cover on here as well, so I'm going to remove that now while I remember. Try not to manhandle it either. As always, the less we kind of touch these types of things as we're getting them ready for use, the better. Um, the one good, let me make sure do that first with all the noise. Um, the one thing that I was really um, pleased about is it's pretty clear which side to uh, infuse onto because the other side is like a goldy color um, and this is 
the metal color. So that is what we're going to be applying onto today. Let me just make sure there's nothing on here. There is another cover, it looks like, on here. So I'm just going to get that off as well. Well, they actually, they are. You can do both sides, it looks like. So there you go. I thought it was only one side, but that was the um, covering that was on. But we're going to use this side tonight, and hopefully it's going to work perfectly. So I'll pop that to the side. Just check the comments, see um, what everyone's up to. Uh, Lynette's saying, do you have a Cricut mug machine? A <laughs> great question. As I'm opening this, I'll talk about that. Uh, the Cricut mug press is coming to Australia, but there is no fixed date yet. We believe it will be at the end of this year. There was some confusion because of the way that the Americans um, had their dates with the month first and the, and the date second. So it was released there, I think it was the 3rd or the 14th or something like that, which was actually the 14th of March. And everyone, no. It was the 11th of the 4th, which, sorry, it was 4-11, which was the 11th of April. Am I getting this right? March. Anyway, you, it was released in March. We thought it was going to be, everyone read that to be in November, and uh, that's not the case. There's definitely no date. I will let you know two things. One, the minute I've got one, and two, the minute I know when it's going to be released here. In Australia. I've got lots of projects ready to go. I suggest you do the same thing. If you're interested in the mug press, start designing now. Start thinking about what you're going to put on all of those gorgeous mugs. And I've got some really, really fun, um, I'm not going to say what it is, but I found a really cool product that I cannot wait to use the uh, mug press on. So I'll let you know. Now, in your package, your infusible link, it is in a black um, uh, covering. Now, that is because Infusible Ink is light sensitive. It is heat sensitive as well. You must store it in a cool, dry place, but also put it back in the black packaging, which you'll see me do tonight. Okay, so keep it in there. In there, you'll get your lymph free cloth. You'll also get butcher paper, depending on the size of the roll, um, that you'll also use when we do the application, and that will all be revealed um, shortly as well. All right. Uh, so Judy's saying two sheets. Uh, yes, so this was a two-pack, the infusible link that I'm using. Um, sometimes you can get it in a four-pack as well. Erica's here, awesome. Um, just trying to make sure I'm not missing any of the comments. Um, coasters, coasters. Oh, God, I've got so many coasters. And in fact, with the mug press, I'll be doing coasters with a matching mug, which I just think will be amazing. And if it comes at the end of the year, perfect for Christmas. Um, Lynette used the Joy Iron-On when she first got her Easy Press. Perfect, yeah, the Easy Press is great for, um, um, for Iron-On. You do need an Easy Press or a Heat Press. This product I would definitely not recommend using with an iron. I know some people do have success, but I just wouldn't recommend it. I certainly would not be confident in the results that you will get. All right, so let's jump into design space. Cos. We are doing an Anzac Day um, uh, project today, and that's in honour of my grandfather, who served, my great grandfather, who served in the Second World War in about four New Zealand, it's in the New Zealand Army. Um, and I just want to show you quickly, I'm just going to go to a new project, and I just want to click on images, and I'm going to search Anzac. Now, I know from discussions, I can't even spell, and, oh, and, and Zach, yeah. <laughs> what am I doing? It must be uh, Thursday. Um, but there's some fabulous images in a design space now, um, which are included in Cricut Access, if you have Cricut Access, or you, I, I have access, so I don't know whether you can buy them individually, but you, mo most cases you normally can. But great with these pen projects here that have done, uh, where you can use pens to draw. Lots of great projects that could be used for vinyl, for iron-on, for infusible ink. Um, I just combined a couple of these images to come up with the project that I was most happy with. But I'm really, really loving some of these images. If I just insert these quickly and show you, you know, I really wanted to incorporate the um, the uh, poppy in my design. But here, you know, some really, really fabulous designs uh, with Australia and New Zealand. And yeah, lots of really, really cool things. And I combined mine and I will share it in my uh, Facebook page, Scissors Paper Paul, the project, there's a pin post on my page where I share all of these projects um, for all of you if you want to make these things. Um, and uh, yeah, you can obviously make the specific project that I make. So let's have a look. Let's go to my projects. And 
The first one will be, once it comes up, will be my Anzac Day. What's happening here? Let's go to my favorites. All else fails, just click around. <laughs> uh, so once it comes up, so yeah, what I took, I took a, um, a kind of a static image, which was a soldier uh, with some words. I took a poppy, I've kind of sliced it out, and then I've created like a three kind of tone slash color image. Again, I don't know how vibrant these colors are going to be when they go onto the aluminium. Uh, I've seen some other projects online that look very vibrant, and I'm hoping that's the result we get tonight, but we're going to find out together. I'll just jump into the comments while I wait for that to load. Yeah, Erica's loving the poppies. Using a similar ones on a project at the moment, awesome. Nothing to do with Anzac Day, of course. I mean, poppies are a it's a beautiful flower. Uh, and that's not going well, so let me just uh, try and do something else. I'll just go to home. This is my project on the home screen. Let's just do that. You can see the images here that I've actually used. I've done some contouring, changed some of the colors. I'm just going to click Customize so that um, I can show you exactly kind of how I made it. Now, one of the tips that I'm going to give you, if you are creating for Infusible Ink or Iron-On, where we do mirror the image, one thing that I like to do, okay, this is personal preference, because I forget to mirror my image when I'm cutting, is I will actually select my image, go to the top here where it says Flip, I'm going to select it and I'm going to flip it horizontally and I will actually save it as a mirrored image and that way when I click cut I don't have to worry about reading what comes up on my screen even though it tells me when you choose infusible ink or iron on it tells you to make sure you've mirrored um, I don't have to worry about that because it's already back to front so I just wanted to share that with you um, because normally this is what my design would look like in my design space we're going to click make it and I've already cut out the, um, the gray and black polka dot layer. I've also cut out the red layer. So we're gonna cut out the green layer, which is super small. It's less than two by two inches. I'm gonna click continue. It's gonna obviously gonna connect to my machine. Uh, now, one other thing that I wanted to tell you as well, uh, you know your machine. I know my machine and I know what works well with my machine. I'm just gonna turn on this image Okay, so hopefully you can see that, but what I do is I find that often with Infusible Ink, my machine can cut a little bit uh, deep. It doesn't matter so much with um, Infusible Ink, and I'll show you kind of how you can repair that. But if you're finding it's cutting all the way through, what I do, hopefully you can see, is I just, un um, I've released the latch on clamp um, B for blades, and I just poke my weeding tool just under my blade to just lift it a little bit so not a lot but just a little bit and then i close the clamp now the one thing is if you find that that happens to you and you do this trick make sure that you put it back to the way it was otherwise when you go to cut anything else of course it's not going to be cutting deep enough so that's just one little tip that i had and uh, hopefully that will help you again that's why you want to do the test cuts all the time so we're we're choosing infusible transfer sheets today uh, and then we're going to go through the process of loading our mat. So let's do that. Um, so let's cut open our infusible ink package and throw that piece in the rubbish. And we're going to get it out. Now there is butcher paper here as well. So that I've got so much butcher paper. Don't go out and buy it. It comes with your package. All right. So you get heaps of that. You definitely won't run out. Well, I certainly haven't yet. Um, and then we're going to take out our infusible ink and again you can see that it's really really dull compared to what it's showing on the package and that's fine because this is what it starts like and this is what it's going to end up like so I'm just going to take this out now another tip is do not manhandle your um, infusible ink okay so touch it as little as you can I'm just going to slice off a piece here and also make sure that your hands are dry and not um, not moist basically um, for lack of a nicer word because moist is a terrible word um, but you want to make sure that you are uh, touching it as little as possible and that you're not getting it sort of you know sweaty fingers on it or anything like that because 
um, that can take off some of that ink because again it's heat activated that could remove some of the ink and you could get like a blotchy or a fingerprint or a little bit of a smudge on your design so do that as little as you can then pop it back in the black packaging put it back in your box and then store it away in that cool dry place i'll throw that behind me um, again i only need a tiny little square so i'm just gonna cut that off and look perfect little piece for doing my test cutting next time i'll pop that away and i'll pop that away excuse me and we'll take a cover off our mat and we're going to pop this i'm just going to flip my mat around so if you didn't know your mats can go in either way not sideways um, again don't want to touch it too much this is where your brayer also comes in really handy so you can brayer it down you want to make sure it's definitely stuck to your mat and then i'm going to load it into a maker which you can't see here i'm going to load that in And then now Design Space is telling me to click go. So I'm going to do that. And that is going to cut. Now, while it's doing that, let's go back to, I'm going to get my designs that I've cut already. So let's go to split camera here. Um, so these are the parts that I've cut already. So again, I'm not, I'm even when you're weeding this, when you're taking it off, what I would do is I would hold it down here and I'd remove this piece, you know, I'd hold it on the side. I'm, I'm really making an effort not to touch the um, infusible ink as much as I can. All right, so we've got our gray and polka dot, which is hard to believe that's what it's gonna look like, and our red piece as well. And now we're gonna eject our mat and I'm just going to unload this. So bend your mat back um, to remove your material I'm going to put my cover back on my mat to keep it nice and clean pretty clean anyway it's, uh, it's a bit hairy that one I'm going to do a video soon on cleaning mats <laughs> um, but here we go so we can see that it's cut here okay, hopefully you can see that um, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick up a corner okay you can do cracking which is where they sort of roll it a little bit but I'm just going to pick up a corner to start peeling and then I'm just going to peel that back and it's like paper infusible ink okay it's very different to iron on um, so that is normal that is what it should be like and we just peel the parts that we don't want again trying not to touch this as much as we can even though we're going to manhandle it in a minute um, so that again we're not you know removing any of that ink from uh, the transfer sheet so there are our pieces we've got our green leaf We've got our uh, poppy, the red, and then we've got our, our black piece as well. But with infusible ink, one thing that we can't do is apply a layer over and over again. I have done an infusible ink on a tote bag, and then I've applied iron on over the top of it, uh, and that worked fine, but it's recommended that you apply this where possible all in one application. And that's what's called slice and set. So you might've heard that term, but effectively what we're gonna do now is we're gonna puzzle piece this together so that when we're ready to do the application, it's all one piece, we can do it all in one go. So again, let me know if you've got any questions, just jump into the comments to have a look. Um, video cleaning, you're going to do it. I'm going to do it. be nice and short. You're going to be in my kitchen and uh, we'll get out the old uh, sponge and do a bit of cleaning. Uh, Linda saying that the butcher paper breeds in her house. It's so much of it. I know I've got so much of it. So please do not go out and buy butcher paper. You're going to have heaps. Uh, so Sharon's saying there's a great tip, which is awesome. I'm glad that you're getting something out of this. Um, all right, so now let's start doing the puzzle piecing. So the first thing that we want to do is make sure um, that we have got everything up around the right direction so that we're puzzle piecing this together. Um, it's actually going together correctly. Um, so I just need to make sure. Yep. All right, so let's start the process. Now, this is where you are going to have to manhandle it a little bit, but again, just do it as little as you can pick up this tiniest little bit that you can and um you know just be gingerly go gingerly um don't rush and then so i'm just going to peel off this first part of this poppy okay 
So this is a, there's a few parts to this. So just bear with me while we while we do this. Making sure I know where it goes, which is here. So excuse my head if it gets in the camera. And then that looks about right. I'm happy with that. Stick it down now. These are really, really sticky, these um, transfer sheets, so you won't have any problems with that. It will stick together quite nicely. And then we're just going to keep going and adding the other pieces of our puzzle to our design. Again, just take your time. Okay, I probably didn't do that the best, but that's okay. Again, this is what I love about homemade, is it's not perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'll just take off this larger piece and puzzle piece that into where it needs to go. Okay, and then we've got this tiny little piece here for the red. We'll pop that into where it needs to go, which I think is right about there. All right, so there you can see that the design again is back to front, but you can see the design is coming together. Um, the next piece, of course, is our um, um, sort of our stem with our leaf. And with this design, what I did do is I, I really liked positioning the poppy because I wanted to include the poppy. And I kind of like the idea of it being kind of almost not in his brain, but kind of, you know, trying to get my head out of the way, um, but in his mind, I suppose. I just, that's kind of what resonated for me. And then when I was doing the leaf, when I was positioning that, I kind of focused on it being um, like the collar on his, on his shirt. So that's, that was my design process that I went through. Um, you will do obviously what you want to do um, and again, just take my time to place these hoping that I'm not too sweaty and I'm not impacting okay there we go all right so we're done we're ready now to do our application so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to go to the heat guide. So if you didn't know, there is a heat guide. It's, um, I mean, just Google Cricut heat guide, but it is cricket.com forward slash en underscore us forward slash heat guide. <laughs> but do check each and every time because settings do change. And this means that you're going to get the most up to date settings each and every time. So Let's select the Easy Press 2 because that's what we're working with today. Our material is the Infusible Ink Transfer Sheet. Our base material is aluminium sheet and we are using an Easy Press mat. Now with aluminium sheets, it is recommended that you use an Easy Press mat and not a towel. Okay, so that's recommended. Um, I don't know what will happen if you use a towel, but this is these are the recommendations. We click apply. We can see the settings, which I'm doing in Celsius. So it's 195 degrees for 40 seconds. And then we get the stacking order. So this is from top to bottom. So we know if we start at the bottom here, we know that the mat goes at the bottom, white cardstock, aluminium sheet, the design face down, some butcher paper, and then of course, the easy press. Now, other supplies that suggesting we might need are heat resistant tape, which I have got and I'm going to talk about, and that lint free cloth that's your test thing. <laughs> Use that as well, just making sure your surface is really, really nice and clean. So, it does say to preheat um, obviously the easy press to 195 degrees, which I've done. Wipe the aluminium sheet with the lint free cloth, and then making sure, of course, that we're covering the mat with the cardstock for that protective surface. So, we're all organized and we're ready to go. So let's jump back in to the split screen and let's let's make our sandwich. <laughs> right, so let's move our design out the way. So we have easy press mat, boom. Now the easy press mat, if you don't know, it reflects 
the heat back into your project. It also wicks away moisture, in particular if you're doing something that's cloth, uh, to make sure that it's nice and dry. Um, and it's protecting your surface as well from the heat. Plain cardstock on top. So this is AC cardstock that I use all the time. This is a little bit, um, it's a little bit sort of burnt or whatever, or, or warmed up because I, you know, reuse the same piece if you can. Just be careful it's not transferring back onto your next design. Um, but in this case, it's not going to work, matter at all. Um, just making sure that I've got my, um, my aluminium. I'm just making sure that's, again, I've not done this before, so I'm feeling a little bit nervous, but I'm sure we're gonna get there. My lint-free cloth, so giving it a nice clean. And this is true with, you know, if you're doing um, anything with fabric as well, you don't want anything that's going to interfere with the application uh, or the transfer from the infusible ink down onto that surface. Then, of course, our design. And now you'll be able to actually read it. And it's got Anzac Day. And I'm just trying to make sure this is kind of in position. Um, stand for them. So, again, this is just something that stood out to me when I was going through all the images. You will find something that means something to you for Anzac Day. So I'm just going to put my big fat head in here again because I just want to make sure that it's... Again, take your time. <laughs> make sure you're happy with the placement. I'm, just going to move it. I'm happy with the height, but I just want to move it across a little bit. And then go down a bit. I think this is what takes the most time, right? Actually, be happy with. Okay, let's have a look at that. Now, I mentioned a bit of a tip if you had cut through. The great thing about infusible ink, and I'm just going to smooth that down. So, the great thing about infusible ink sheets, if you do cut through, um, have this as smooth as you can, but if you do cut through, you can use heat tape just to patch any cuts as well. So if there's a big slice out of here and you're worried about it, you can just pop a bit of heat tape on there. Um, this is really, really nice and stuck to my design, so I don't think I have to worry about um, uh, using the, trans uh, the heat transfer tape, but I'm just going to make sure it's really smooth and really stuck down. Um, because it needs to be connected to that base in order to really transfer. So I think that looks okay. All right. Now, there's basically no pressure involved on this one. So we're going to take, lastly, which I always forget, a piece of butcher paper over the top, place that down, and then we're going to take our easy press, and I'm using the 9x9, nine nine, uh, and I'm struggling to actually see... Yep, I think that's right. So I'm going to press the flashing C. Hopefully that's right on top of it. <laughs> um, and we don't need any pressure on this one. So it's no pressure. Um, Jennifer, the aluminium is from Craft Online and there's a link in the description if you want to get that. Um, you're welcome, Linda. I'm glad that you like the design. Again, it's what re really resonated with me. I kind of had that vision in my head. And uh, I went with it, and again, hopefully, it works well. Uh, Lynette's asking, what's the difference between using infusible ink or iron on a shirt? So this is infused in your shirt. So it's going to stretch with your shirt. Uh, it's permanent. It's actually infused into the fabric. Whereas with iron-on, you can actually... So I'm just lifting that up. Uh, with iron-on, you can actually feel it. You can, um, you know, you can feel the structure. You can, it's a little bit raised. And potentially, if it wasn't sports flex or something like that, if you pull the shirt really tight, you might actually pull uh, or break your iron-on or your, or your HTV. So hopefully that answers your question. Now, this is a warm peel. I'm imagining because it's uh, on aluminium, it's going to be hot. So I'm just going to move this to the side um, while we do um, the prep for um, what we're going to put our design into. So I'm just going to move this over here out of the way. I'll turn my easy press off rather than set it again. Um, 
Okay, so Janine, great question. Um, I said no pressure, that's from the aluminium sheets. So again, in the heat guide, it will tell you what pressure you need to apply. Uh, you do need to apply some pressure if it's a bag uh, or a t-shirt, I think. Yeah, not, not a lot of pressure, but a little bit of pressure. Uh, with the coasters, with the aluminium sheets, you just pop it on and it, it does the rest. All right, we are going to put this into, excuse me, one of the Anko box frames. You would have seen these before. They're from Kmart. They're like 10 bucks. They're the best. They come in white. They come in black. They're like 10 bucks. Um, they're really deep. So if you want to do rolled flowers, anything like that, they are perfect for all of those types of designs. Anything dimensional, this, this is what you want. I'm just going to unwrap it. If they aren't at your local Kmart, do click and collect. Um, I have done click and click before and they will find them all around the countryside and then they will um, let me see if it's, it's not too bad we might actually do a little reveal here um, they will let you know when they're all in so as I said this is warm peel um, it's not too hot so I won't touch it too much but I'm gonna reveal my design um, so fingers crossed Okay, so it's definitely got a bit of a rustic vibe to it. Uh, probably hasn't transferred a lot of the detail around the dots, but it's kind of, it's actually got a bit of a, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Like a uh, sort of oldie worldy World War II-y, if you like, um, kind of vibe to the transfer. Um, but again, one thing that I would say, uh, which I kind of, thought about when I was doing the application is make sure that you that this is really really stuck down firmly against your des, um, aluminium sheet because um, you're not applying that pressure which you normally would with another transfer and again I've obviously used a pattern here but you could just do this with a plain uh, black and I think your transfer would be a little bit more consistent but you can see there the color is there um, probably easier to see in daylight I'll just sort of lift it up you can kind of see there and again it's got that kind of you know homemade kind of feel to it the vibe to it so let's continue we're going to pop this into our shadow box so I've just got an old bone folder that I use to uh, lift all of these little catchy things whatever they're called let me know in the comments if you know what they're called <laughs> um, I will sort of blow on the inside of this because I do find they're a little bit dusty. Um, if you are selling this or giving this away to someone, I'd probably suggest you, you know, maybe give it a bit of a, a good clean, but we're not going to do that tonight. I'll move that out of the way. But we will just uh, give it a little blow just to remove any dust. Now, I had a number of options for cardstock that I wanted to use for my backing. Um, so you can help me decide. So let me try and move this out of the way actually let's move it up here while we do make this decision so I think I can sort of yeah, I can handle that now so one is white not sure I'm loving that one is black it probably pops a little bit more I don't think I like the green and I actually had a different green here as well I think I'm leaning towards the black actually what do you guys think in the comments let me know but I think I'm gonna go with the black uh, someone's asking is it wet no it's not wet um, I think it's just because it's got that ghosting from where the, it wasn't fully connected to the aluminium sheet um, so it hasn't fully transferred so it's given this kind of sort of almost a marbly effect um, which we're gonna go with. so I think I'm gonna go with black now um, because, because this is quite, um, yep, yeah, cool, thanks for the votes for black. Because this is, it's not too heavy, it's super light actually, but because it's not cardstock on cardstock, normally I wouldn't put too much glue on my cardstock when adhering it to my back, uh, my backing of my shadow box, but because this is a little bit heavier, I am just going to be a little bit more liberal. Uh, I'm going to use my Kikuyo, which you know I love. I'm just going to put lots and lots 
the glue um, because I just want to make sure it's definitely that one's just run out really really stuck down so that when we apply the uh, when we attach the um, aluminium that hopefully there'll be no issues with it uh, you know not being able to hold it um, so I'm just going to hold this up like this together just tap it on the top and the bottom so I know that it's perfectly aligned and then just give it a nice press with my hands you could use liquid glue as well just be mindful that liquid glue takes a little bit longer to uh, dry and also don't be too liberal with it because otherwise you might end up with a design that um, um, uh, it, it, it might be all sort of bubbly and a bit sort of wackadoo so I'm just, sorry I'm just moving things around and got the heaps of room here with all of these extra bits than normal um, so this is going to be here in the middle I'm going to prop it up a little bit and how I'm going to do that is and again I don't even know I'm going to test it now to see if it's going to stick yep it is going to stick excellent so this is uh, express it if you can see that I get this from spotlight as well so you know I love my foam squares but I'm going to use some foam tape tonight because again this is a little bit heavier than cardstock and I want to make sure that it's not going to come off so I'm just going to cut some lengths of this stick that on again I'm going to do I'm going to do a few because I want it to stay on so I might actually even do four um, and I'm doing this based on my gut feels so this is purely what I think is going to work uh, and hopefully it will work <laughs> we'll find out um, but foam squares foam tape buy it when it's on sale really great asset to have in your craft room and then I'm just going to take my weeding tool and I'm just going to uh, pick the top off Okay, I'll pick that up. Again, I'm just going to I'm just going to move my mat because the great thing about these cutting mats is that you can use them to eyeball and center your design. So I'm looking at the middle of my mat, and I'm looking at the middle, sort of yeah, horizontally and vertically, to try and center that. And I'm happy with this. And of course you could also put like a name um you know i did contemplate putting the name of my great-grandfather on uh, maybe the front of the glass you could do that if you wanted to completely up to you um but yeah i think that's going to uh, hold quite nicely and it just gives that a little bit of dimension so that when you're if it's hanging on a wall and you're walking past it it's just not flat against um your uh you know your uh, background so i'm just going to pop that back into our shadow box these things never want to go back in do they that one's been a problem okay there we go now that one's been a problem there we go all right so i'm just going to pop some of these down just so i can show you and then I will check your comments. If you're watching the replay again, if you've got any questions, please, please, please let me know. Um, I'll show it front on first. So there is our Anzac Day um, design. And yeah, I think it could be nice to maybe put my grandfather's details here. You could also include in here, maybe put mount some of the medals. Maybe I'll do that as well. I actually meant to wear one of his medals tonight and I completely forgot um, but you could mount some of the medals down here you know lots of really cool things you could do you could also I mean I've got papers of his as well you know you could make a background if you didn't want you know we're worried about those um, being more sort of protected and uh, you know cherished without being you know turned into crafts uh, but the background you could put some of their paperwork in there as well um, show you from from the overhead um, so there you go uh, that is my design. I hope you got something out of that. Um, again, I'll jump in the comments. Donna saying, what would be awesome would be a silhouette of a photo of a person. Perfect. So rather than using the design that I got off um, design space, and also you could use this same image, but just 
uh, remove the soldier silhouette and put the silhouette of your loved one. I think that would be amazing. If you do that, I really, really, I would love, love, love to see it. Um, Janine saying it's a good idea with the medals, something I just thought of. I, I think I might actually follow through with that one. Um, Erica saying deep red with the poppies debossed on it. And again, yeah, so, I mean, you can engrave on these as well. So you can maybe engrave over the top of this after doing this. You could engrave some words on there maybe, or, or you know, maybe the, I don't know what you call it, you know, the, the, the thing that people say around that day, <laughs> those words that would be really lovely as well. Um, I'm seeing black, red, green. Yep, so lots of votes, but we went with black. Awesome. If I missed your comments, I will uh, jump back and have a look. Uh, this Sunday, as always, 11 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, I will be live on YouTube, so right here, and I will be doing a two iron-on projects. So I've got two aprons, two designs, one a little bit kind of um, luxe, and one a little bit naughty, <laughs> not too naughty, uh, hopefully not too naughty, um, but we're going to do that uh, on the weekend. And then next sun Thursday, because Natalie's still, um, well, she may be uh, up and about and a little bit better, but if she's not, it's going to be me again, 7pm Australian Eastern Standard Time, Thursday night, here again on YouTube. I will be live and I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll have to have a think about it. If you've got any ideas of what you want to see, definitely let me know. Again, if you're not subscribed to my channel, make sure to give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and then you won't miss out on any content as soon as I upload videos. All right, guys, have a wonderful night. Have a wonderful week and weekend. Hopefully I'll see you on Sunday. If not, I'll see you next Thursday. Take care. Bye.